What's up guys, Damon or 1212 and it's Weird PBS Kids Show Review Day. Ah yes, Weird PBS Kids Show Review Day. A series of videos that started as an April Fool's joke that is now a significant portion of the content I've made in the last three years. Your boy's been busy. Your boy's been busy. I do promise though, I will do that uh, worst of 2023 Yu-Gi-Oh list. Yeah, that might end up being the, the April Fool's joke this year. <laughs> So, for this series, we've looked at Sabumafu, we've looked at Liberty Kids, what are we looking at today? Well, we've had zoology and American history, so uh, what about general sciences? That is a terrible segue. What about fish? Today we're looking at a show that I remember very fondly, The Magic School Bus. Come on, right on The Magic School Bus! Man, I loved this show as a kid so much, I even named one of my abandoned Yu-Gi-Oh! series after it. But man, what a great show this is. Following the adventures of third grade teacher Miss Frizzle and her class of eager young students as they go on increasingly wacky field trips so that they learn by doing. I'm pretty sure it was a dream of every 90s kid that field trips were like this, uh, like, you know, flying through space to see the various planets of our solar system, going back in time to see dinosaurs, or in the case of today's episode, the life cycle of salmon. <laughs> Okay, so not every episode's a banger, but you know what I mean. Or is it? So let's find out what today's episode, The Magic School Bus, goes upstream. This episode starts like every other episode with the theme song. And what a theme song it is. Cruising on that main street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Yeah. Can we just stop and appreciate how awesome this is? This shit's a banger, given like Huey Lewis in the news. You like Huey Lewis in the news? I feel like the 90s and early aughts had some really good kids show theming. Like, like all the theme songs are just really, really good. On a sound wave. Like even for this, which is like an, an edutainment show, which they really could have phoned in, frankly. My Spotify has got to be really embarrassing. Come on, let's go, me and you and our story opens with our class of heroes on a boat the titular Magic School Bus has turned into. It is magical after all. And it has taken them line fishing in, uh... Holy crap! The theories online say their school's in Rhode Island. This is obviously just a theory. Because there is nothing in Rhode Island. Here we get to meet our principal cast of one-dimensional characters. You've got Ralphie, the every kid. Wanda, the bossy one. Carlos, the class clown. Phoebe, the transfer student. Keisha, another bossy girl character. Liz, the class's sentient pet chameleon. And Tim, who is certainly a character that is in this show. Not present on deck are Dorothy Ann, the smart one, and Arnold, the Yu-Gi-Oh player. Your boy Ralphie starts this episode complaining that despite having had luck fishing for salmon in this exact spot with his uncle, they are now not catching a damn thing. To which Wanda seems to, like, not believe him? I don't know why she would have any reason to doubt him, but sure. This sets up our episode's conflict because Ralphie has volunteered the entire class to provide the fish for the fish fry baseball game school function thing. What is that? I, I like, they could have just done a fish fry. Why, I don't know why they put baseball in there too. Like, I have no idea why they thought to go catch and gut their own fish, being that they're a bunch of kids, but okay. Also, salmon for a fish fry? That's a bizarre choice, isn't it? Like, normally it's like haddock or cod or something. This is, like white fish? This is, this is weird, but <laughs> this is not the weirdest thing that happens in this episode. All seemed lost until they managed to snag something on the line. But oh shoot, it's not dinner. It's their teacher, Miss Frizzle, voiced by Lily Tomlin of Grace and Frankie. I learned that today. Thanks for fishing me out, class. I was just testing our new fearsomely fast flippers, and I have to say they are fantastic. And can I just say, Miss Frizzle really is a great catch. If you can think of anyone better, let me know. All right, I'll climb up now. Even though these are really cracking me up. All right, all right, all right, I got one more, I got one more. Uh, But I'm not trying to be coy about it. Well, back to business. I swear, I'm not doing this on porpoise. <laughs> you like ocean puns? Probably not, but you know, that's fine because this episode's full of them. It's not just me. Anyway, Ralphie explains that they're having no luck catching anything, to which Miss Frizzle says, As my tantric filter would probably say, there's something fishy going on here. Her what? Oh, it's Yiddish for ant and gefelta, like gefelta fish. That's cute. Wait, does this mean Miss Frizzle's Jewish? Damn, I'm here for this deep magic school bus lore. To the bus 
bus, class. But we're already on the bus. Oh, well, nice one, Phoebe. So, in order to get to the bottom of the mystery of the missing salmon, Miss Frizzle has Liz turn the bus into a salmon instead of just, I don't know, taking the kids to the fish store. Just buying them, maybe? But like, you know what? Yeah, the kids wouldn't learn nothing that way. We also need to have a show, I guess. Loading up some salmon AI on a CD labeled Pisces 95, the Frizz locks the bus into salmon mode, letting instinct lead the way. She just has this? Why does she have this? Also, it's like a CD. So it, the bus is magic, but the CD is technology. So is, is the technology of the CD also magic? Is the bus actually technology? What are the rules? Hopefully this goes better than the last time she let the bus drive itself. Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Dorothy Ann takes this time to inquire about the odd five senses-like computer monitors about the cabin, to which Valerie, that's Miss Frizzle's first name by the way, I learned that today as well, explains it's the various sensory input the bus fish is getting in real time. She also drops some more MBS lore. As my cousin Poseidon always says, the fresher the fish, the better. Oh my quirky goddess. <laughs> After getting the bus some food by the way of other live fish, which brings to mind like so many questions. Where, like, where does it go? Is the bus powered by biomatter? Does it take gasoline? I The bus detects danger. A shark attack. Oh no. Man of action, Ralphie tries to save the class, but Miss Frizzle explains that the bus now has a mind of its own and uh, she's also completely unworried. Her adherence to trust the process is borderline psychotic. After evading the shark, the bus joins a school. <laughs> Get it? It's a school and it's a school bus. It was funny. It, of salmon after ignoring some food. Wikipedia powered android Dorothy Ann determines that this must mean they are migrating. Though to where and why, the kids don't know. Understandably, Ralphie freaks out that the migration will make them miss the fish fry function and uh, regrets ever saying that he would do anything for some fish. Luckily though, he has a plan. Throw on some scuba gear and physically turn the bus around. Normally skeptical Wanda seems to think this plan is a good idea. And even Ralphie himself is surprised. Better be good, Ralphie. Of course it's good. It's caviar. We'll just go outside and turn the bus around. Hey, that is good. Wow, she never says that. Seeing how this is a terrible idea, but sure. Also, I will say that this underwater sequence is pretty slick. I like the, the wavy filter they got going on here. It's a, it's a pretty slick little piece of animation. A kum props. We're not stopping! It's not gonna stop! We're gonna be salmon! Big Dweeb Arnold notices that the water is getting less salty as they progress, and Phoebe postulates that they are no longer in the ocean. Just then, Tim remembers he is also in this show and chimes in with, I think we're migrating toward a river. Thanks, Tim. Glad you're here. The scuba team is now riding a bunch of other salmon to try to catch up to the bus, but lo and behold, the bus has stopped to digivolve. Bus Simon, Digivolve 2! Pregnant Bus Simon! Miss Frizzle, Miss Frizzle, the bus and the salmon are changing right before our eyes! Don't worry, kids, Miss Frizzle's aloof wisdom is to the rescue. That's right, Ralphie. Kind of like you will when you become a teenager. Only salmon changing fishier ways. I'm dumping this kid's books. After a close call with some seals and a little rain to raise the water level, the salmon are underway. But Ralphie has a new plan to stop the bus. I have another plan. I hope it's better than the last one, Ralphie. This one is caviar a la mode. Ew, <laughs> what? Since we can't stop that bus on our own, we'll hook that guy into catching it for us. It is good, Ralphie. Didn't she say that the last time? Ralphie is clearly a genius because this actually works and the bus sees the lure, taking the bait. We took the bait! Isn't this thrilling? Or should I say, gilling? All right, that one was a stretch. Oh boy, a yellow salmon. Wait till Cindy sees this. Dude, I'm sure your woman will love this. Some ladies like chocolates, some like roses, others, a smelly dead fish. Now that the bus is caught, how does Ralphie expect to get it off the line so it's not eaten? Well, we just, uh... uh you don't know? Oh, he, he has no idea. 
But no worries, the bus gets off the line on its own and throws the scuba crew into the drink. Oh, so their mystery destination is represented as a mental puzzle the bus is constructing as it remembers where it is going. And in this scene, the total number of pieces is different. I, I just kind of think that's funny. Ralphie, <laughs> the goat, figures if they dam up this small waterfall, the bus will finally be forced to stop. Let's ignore that there is plenty of undammed waterfall on either side, but well, okay, sure, let the man cook. The bus gets here and initially it looks like the dam worked, much to the kid's elation. But that is cut short as the bus makes a second attempt and clears the dam. But it's okay though, because this Gooba gang has come to respect the salmon for their tenacity, even if they still don't have any idea where the hell they're going. Where are they going? And why? Hey look, they're here! And the picture's complete! I'd say we're here! The scuba team then returns to the bus, and Ralphie, defeated, asks if we'd all just go home now now that the bus has migrated and all of his plans have failed. Miss Frizzle says sure, but only after they finish disc two. Man, remember when, like, games came on, like, a couple of CDs? And this, this show is old. Yeah, I think Frizzle needs to upgrade to that new Fandangle DVD. And, oh boy, what a disc it is. The kids are ejected from the bus into the hole and have been transformed into salmon eggs. After a message from our sponsors, we return to the kids still in their eggshells, waxing about the purpose for migration. It is evident the female fish came here to lay their eggs, but why would the male fish come along? Excuse me, sir. We were just wondering, any particular reason why you're here? <laughs> okay, so we get an answer. Mm -hmm. A salmon egg went to Oh wow, the fish blows a fat one right on our heroes. Can we even show this on YouTube? Okay, there is so much to unpack here. Frizzle singing a little ditty about salmon boning, the male salmon fertilizing the eggs, the fucking sound effect they play over it. Like what is that? Yo, fellas, <laughs> imagine if it really made that noise. <laughs> no woman would sleep with us ever. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay, I get it. Like, it's it's part of the life cycle. It, it's it's how we sexually reproduce. Um, I'm not sure how you would explain this in any other way because this is literally what happens. And this is an educational show, so it should be accurate. But jeez. The worst part about this whole thing is I remember this from when I was a kid and I didn't think anything of it. Being an adult is wild. It, it, it ruins everything. What? Is he some sort of car wash? Hey, yo, Carlos, that, that's no car wash. And I don't really want to think about a car wash that tries to clean your clear coat with a clear coating of erectoplasm. <sighs> okay, so the kids have an epiphany that the salmon migrate to both lay their eggs and fertilize them. Meaning the... The reason for migration is... I love how Ralphie is just saying this as a cloud of pregnog is just wafting by. Bunch of fish blowing a bunch of high fructose porn syrup on a couple of kids. It's a PBS kid show. A kid blowing some cream of meat on a fish. Well, that's this very specific manga. <laughs> Thanks, Ebo. <laughs> so now that the kids are covered in fapple juice, Miss Frizzle tells Liz it's time to to hatch the new batch. And the bus proceeds to start burying the kids alive. Tim and Dorothy Ann take one from their teacher's playbook and decide to trust the process because all the other fish are doing it. But Arnold has seemingly reached his limit and accidentally acknowledges two very specific fetishes. Becoming an egg? Okay. Getting fertilized? Okay. Getting buried in an egg? Not okay. Hey Arnold, don't kink shame me. Tight is right, Ralphie. <laughs> Damn straight, girl. I'm going to speed things up a bit, class. Let's break an egg. Oh, interesting. How are they gonna accomplish that? Oh God, I thought the baby batter scene was bad, but this is worse. The weird fry versions of the kids with the yolk sack thing and the bulging eyes is the stuff of nightmares. This, this I do remember vividly from watching this as a kid. It creeped me out then, it creeps me out now. Though I do think it's pretty funny that Arnold looks basically the same. What a dork. It's uh, short-lived though, as the Frizz blasts them with this weird laser beam thing, which accelerates them to a later stage in life. Here the kids pig out on bugs, I think? And Wanda just makes th these great mouth noises. <laughs> Lovely. 
All this ends up being a learning experience for the kids as they put this all together and figure out that not only do salmon come to streams to find a safe place to lay their eggs, but they also go to the same stream that they were hatched using all of their instincts and senses, which is why they knew to do all of this from the first place. With lessons learned, our heroes leave their fishy friends behind to make it on time to the fish fry baseball event thing. Arnold's cousin Janet, a recurring minor character, goes on about how the class is ruining the party because they are late with the fish for the fish fry. But our boy Ralphie chimes in and presents the long-awaited food. Fried potatoes shaped like fish. It turns out going on an epic journey with the fish and getting a rapport kind of sours the whole idea of killing and gutting them. And then cooking them and eating them. But that's okay, because the frizz hits us with one final piece of lore. As my friend the Sturgeon General used to say, once you've seen a salmon on the move, the rest is potatoes. And then we all laugh, taking this joke as an explanation to why if not fish, why potatoes as opposed to anything else. Okay, like I get Sturgeon General hardy har har, <laughs> but like why is it potatoes? Everything is potatoes? What does that mean? Anyway, everyone laughs at this joke as if it makes any sense and we fade to black. Episode over. Finishing off this episode, we get this recurring segment where a child calls the producers of the show and discusses some inaccuracies in the science presented. To make the plot flow and make some kind of narrative sense, the show has to often stretch the truth to get things to work as a cartoon. This segment's here to clear up any of that, which honestly is a pretty nice feature to make sure that the younger and less critical thinking members of our society, you know, Kids, who the show is for, don't mistake narrative fiction for scientific fact. In this particular segment, we discussed that even though we did see the hardships of the salmon, the journey is actually far more dangerous and far fewer salmon actually make the journey. But like, this is a kid's show. But not only that, but it also takes way longer uh, to get there and also to uh, hatch an egg. So, and then grow up and then leave the stream but we have to do it in 22 minutes, so. The producer man then tells the kid on the phone not to worry about the dissonance of him doing a salmon survival episode while he's out here fishing because he sucks at it and promises if by some miracle he does catch a fish, he'll just throw it back. And that's the magic school bus goes upstream. The 34th episode of the series and certainly a memorable one. I find it really fascinating that every episode of the show has what the producers called Miss Frizzle rules which the writers use to maintain continuity and make sure all the science presented is presented in as factual a manner as possible. For the set of rules for this specific episode, just Google like Miss Frizzle Rule 34 and you will be very surprised with what you find. <laughs> yes! Don't do that! It was a joke! <laughs> I was, it was... I would have thought you have got enough of that, that kind of thing from this episode anyway. Overall, I actually still kind of like the show. Even if, you know, this episode in particular is a little strange, but I do find it does an excellent job at presenting information and presenting it in a way that makes it interesting. Because science is interesting. There's a lot of cool things in our world and the reason things work is actually something that people should understand because education and such. But sometimes it gets a little a little much and could be a little boring. So presenting it in this kind of fashion where the kids are going on an adventure and learn things along the way is a pretty good vessel at getting information to children. Overall, it's, it's still a great show and there's a reboot now. I know nothing about it. But anyway guys, that was the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you guys for the next episode, which is probably gonna end up at this point being uh, the next April Fool's episode next year. <laughs> I will see you guys later. <laughs>